welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation about the mundane, you could say, the uninteresting or the inconsequential, I think is probably the best way to... I think that's better. Mundane, sometimes people have an, uh, a feelings around that word. Sure. So the inconsequential. So everything we're going to be talking about on our podcast, if you're new to the podcast, is going to be inconsequential. So it doesn't matter if you get to the end of the episode, feel free to drift off. And if it takes you to sleep, great. That's our goal. (laughs) Uh, We used to say, and I still do, it's the only podcast we hope you never get to the end of. I want to thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. Amanda, we just got back from a lovely trip. We did. We were in Chicago. Have we talked about this on the podcast? I don't think so. The Windy City. Yeah. Chai Town, I think it's called. It It has has many names. It has many nicknames. Uh, Here's here's a little saying about Chicago that we, we did a beautiful architectural tour of Chicago on the river. And they said on the tour that... New York. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. New York is all talk. LA is all show. And Chicago is all work. And I actually think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, It's definitely a working person city. Um, Not on this trip, but I did for some time, for a very short time, live in Chicago. I don't know how long you have to be somewhere to say you lived there because it was a very short stay. But in any event... um, there was a time in my life where I had a home in Chicago for, you know, two months. And um, I went to the Union Museum. So oh, I she, didn't know there was a Union Museum. There is, in Old Town, yeah. And it's, um, Chicago is very known for its unions. I don't know if you noticed, but something I noticed driving under the bridge. There's such a series of bridges and tunnels and things there. When you say driving, do you mean floating under the bridge? I actually mean being in the Uber. Okay. I guess I wasn't riding under the bridge. And uh, the union that had painted the wall on the tunnel, they had spray painted it there. So everyone knew what union it was, what local it was. Local 192. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much a working person's town. And that's what we were doing there. I've got some nicknames for Chicago, Amanda. See if Lay you're aware of them on me. So Windy City, we know. Windy City, for sure. It looks like it came from an article in the Gazette, the Cleveland Gazette in 1885. Mm. Um, it was referred to the Windy City. Uh, was actually to Green Bay in 1856. Oh. Was the first known repeated effort to label Chicago with this nickname from 1876. And one of the things we... Uh, learned on our architecture tour is that a lot of the buildings actually have a wind floor, a floor that the wind can pass through for the structural integrity of the building. That's actually the the third uh, most used structural integrity wind uh, dealing with um, thing they said on the tour. Sorry, what? I I said it completely wrong, but basically there's third most structural there are three things the tall buildings. Things. <laughs> there's three things the tall buildings do to compensate for the wind in the city. Oh, okay. And the wind floor was the third most popular. Oh, the most popular was they have these giant tubs of water, barrels of water, mm-hmm. so that when the wind sways and pushes the building one way, the water sloshes. And I'm using the exact words they said on the tour: mm. sloshes in the other direction, like a ballast, like a ballast, keeping the building. Um, less rocky back and forth, I guess. Right. Like the water itself actually. So the water is in the, where would it be? In the I guess walls? they have a structural part. Um, I feel like it was in the center of the, wow. of the thing. And they said that one, that's the most popular. And um, they've said it multiple times. I can't remember what the second one oh, was. No, and the third one was the wind floor. And there was one building uh, that it, it incorporated all three, I think. The second city is another name for... Yeah. So I've heard a few theories about the second city. The one I always heard was that because it wasn't LA or or New York, it was considered a second city to New York or a second city to LA. More New York, I think. New York, I think, yeah. But but the, I heard another explanation. I don't know if you caught that one for why they call it the second city. Oh, no, sure. Go for it. So another explanation was because there was the great fire um, 
in Chicago, very well known, very documented. Mrs. O'Leary's cow was Mrs. blamed. Mrs. O'Leary's cow was blamed for this fire. And um, so they rebuilt the city. So the second city, because it wasn't the first version of that city, because so much of the city had, in fact, been rebuilt, which is kind of an interesting and fun definition. I like that. that take better. We also know the second city because, of course, it became the the name yes. of a theater company, and that is where you and I met. Although yes. we didn't meet at the Second City in Chicago, we met at the Second City uh, in Toronto, which and, is an off, you know, part of that company. And we're both Second City trained and worked for the uh, organization. Yes, that originated, of course, in Chicago, but but is part of Toronto now, You've too. mentioned this uh, nickname, Amanda, Chai Town mm. or Chai Town. Uh, Pretty obvious yep. origin there. Uh, how about uh, City of Big Shoulders? Never heard of that. The City of Big Shoulders is a nickname coined by Carl Sandburg in his 1914 poem, Chicago, which describes the city as stormy, husky, and brawling. Oh, wow. It is the last of several nicknames in the poem. The others hint at the city's major industrial activities, like you mentioned before, the city that works. Mm. Uh, for example, the meatpacking industry and railroad industry. Yeah. It's and again, also, the unions, right? Sure. Railroad unions and bus unions, actually. Mm. And therefore, it's sometimes uh, said that it is the city of broad shoulders. I never heard that, but I really like that mm. one. Mm-hmm. Chiberia. Have you heard of that one? <laughs> no, but that's fun. <laughs> it's a great one. It's like Chicago and Siberia. Yeah. And it was coined by Richard Castro, a meteorologist working for CBS Chicago during a cold wave in 2014, so recently, Amanda. Oh, wow. And it brought the coldest temperatures to the city in multiple decades. Mm-hmm. Uh, city in a garden? I People say that of Toronto, too. Okay. Here it says, in the 1830s, the government of Chicago adopted the motto, Orbs in Horto, a Latin term that translates to city in a garden. Interesting. And it's displayed on the city seal, Amanda. Yeah. And there are a lot of gardens. And a, a, you never think of the waterfront of Chicago. It's so beautiful. But there is a gorgeous waterfront there, of course, on Lake, I believe, Michigan. Here's one I never heard. Mm. Great commercial tree. Okay. I feel like we're moving in a new direction with that. Great commercial tree comes from the lyrics of the state anthem of Illinois. And I'm going to quote here. Till upon the inland sea stands thy great commercial tree. Okay. Mud city. Have you heard that one? (laughs) No, I guess because there was mud. Possibly the oldest nickname for the city, referring to the fact that the terrain of the city used to be a mud flat. Okay, okay. This one I've heard before, City by the Lake. Yeah, I've heard that as well, and it it certainly is. And it's if you haven't been there, you might be impressed by the turquoise-ness of the water there. Because you think of the lakes as sort of murky and so on, um, but the water is really a beautiful color of blue. Gorgeous. Or it can be, anyway, certain days. You've already sort of alluded and mentioned this. The City That Works. It was a slogan from Richard J. Daly's tenure as mayor describing Chicago as a blue-collar, hard-working city, which ran relatively smoothly. I almost would think that maybe Chicago is is the city that coined the term blue-collar. And the reason I say that is because one of the first unions, in fact, were the porters on the trains. So not only did the people who make the railroad become unionized, but the people who worked on those trains, the conductors and the porters especially, um, they became one of the first unions, and they were blue uniforms. Wow. Blue collar. Yeah. That, that's fascinating. Thank you for sharing that, mm-hmm. Amanda. Heart of America. Uh, Chicago is one of the largest transportation cities in America, and its location was once near the center of the United States. Oh, interesting. Heart of America. The Great American City. Okay. You this, say that about a lot of cities, I think. This was taken from Pulitzer Prize winning novel novelist Norman Mailer. Do you say Pulitzer or, or Pulitzer? What do you I, say? P- Paul, I don't say Paul. Pu- Pulitzer. Pulitzer. That's what I say. It comes from Norman Mailer. Do you know who that is? Heard of him. Okay. Uh, their book, Miami and the Siege of Chicago from 1968. Quote, Chicago is a great American city perhaps the last of the great American cities. The notion that Chicago is arguably the most quintessential American city was central to Robert J. Simpson's landmark research on communities, criminology, and urban sociology. 
I, I guess that's from the, the book, Great American City, Chicago and the Enduring Neighborhood Effect. I didn't stop the quote there, so it went from the quote to the next part. So I apologize for that. All good. I mean, I think it is uh, a quintessentially American city. Sure. The cuisine of Chicago oh. is very quintessentially American. I mean, I don't think there is a city that does beer and burgers better than Chicago, honestly. They're known for their meat. Sure. And their barbecue, certainly. Yes. Um, you know, the ribs, all of that. Anything in the meat department. They know what they're doing. If you're not a meat eater, they will make things taste like meat. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're breweries, their beer. It's, okay. yeah, it's a working person city in the best possible way. Um, and there's a lot of really beautiful architecture that we discovered as well. So beautiful. I appreciate that I went to dinner with yourself and a friend of ours mm -hmm. and she said, Oh, when I tell you the temperature of which I want the meat, I know I'm going to get it correct. In other words, medium, medium rare. Yeah. It wasn't going to oscillate to the wrong temperature. Right. And I believe you said you had the best burger you've ever had there. I had the best burger I've ever had there. And that's, I mean, I haven't had, I started eating burgers, proper burgers, not veggie burgers or anything else, pretty late in life. Mm -hmm. um, relatively speaking, I know it's something kids eat. I did not eat them as kids, but I... Every now and then I dabble as an adult, and uh, this one was pretty fantastic. Uh, the City Beautiful. Okay. It's referenced uh, by the eponymous reform movement. Is that how you say eponymous? I, yeah. Sparked by the world. Doesn't that just mean that it's no longer around? I guess. But it was sparked by the World's Columbian es Exposition in 1893, so probably not around. Okay. And it was used by Hawk Harrelson. What a cool first name. The person's name is Hawk. When the Chicago White Sox opened a game at the U.S. Cellular Field. They love their baseball in oh, Chicago. they do. They love their sports, but I think particularly baseball. Well, basketball too. The Bulls, the yeah, Bears, like true. all of them, even the Bruins, right? Yeah. No, that's Boston, pardon me. Um, yeah, the, the Bruins or the, yeah, the yeah. Cubs, the Bears. Blackhawks. Right, yes. Okay, um, the 312. Yeah, well, every city is known by its area code. Mm -hmm. If I gave you area codes, would you know the city? Possibly. I can. There's ours, the 416. Yes. Um, 202, do you know that one? Vermont. No. Oh, no, it's, it's hang on, it is 212. 212 is yeah. New York. Uh, no, Man. 212 is New York. Yes, 202. 202 is... I, someone from 202 called me recently. Hawaii? D.C. Oh, D.C. I was going to yeah. say D.C. Oops. Um, Boston is... Uh, gosh, I forget now. See, we didn't I, We didn't have to do area codes back then. Right. 61, yeah. 612? 613? Oh, sure. She'll look that up. Well, 613 is Ottawa. Right. All right. Yeah, 613. Uh... I'm going to look up Boston. I thought I knew postal codes, uh, not postal codes. I thought I knew area codes better. The last one that I have on my list of nicknames for Chicago, man, are you 617 ready? 617 is Boston. Okay. I knew it was a 61 something. Um, is Paris on the Prairie. We did hear that we while did. we were there. I mean, Paris, I guess because it has a river running uh, through it's it. It's a name from Daniel Burham's quote plan for Chicago. So I'm taking it. That's a book that this person wrote or no, he was an ar ar architect and urban designer. So it's probably from his book. I have to say, I don't personally enjoy when people put another city's characteristics and say it's this of the, this. Sure. So Paris of the Prairie, why can't it just be Chicago mm -hmm. of the par Prairie? The one that now is readily said but it was a marketing ploy about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. is the Mayan Riviera. Right. Now everyone just says, oh, I was on the Mayan Riviera. But that, 30 years ago, that wasn't a thing. And then tourism board sure. started saying, oh, it's the Riviera, but it's the Mayan yes. Riviera. In Mexico, of course, the Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, now it's become that. I, we hear that a lot. I, I invite you to put... Um, Riviera next to your local body of water. Right. So so pick a body of water. That the Ontario could... Riviera, Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario. I'm trying to think of... Uh, Huron. I don't even the, know. The um, I'm trying to think of other cities that they do the that Mississippi for. Mississippi Riviera, the Mississippi River. Um, 
I'm trying to think of other cities where they say... Backyard. We get, in Toronto, we get Hollywood North, yes. people say a lot. Like, for some reason, I guess because Hollywood is considered and is the mecca of where all filming for TV and film happens. For sure. That's why there's Bollywood right. for movies that And we India. get Hollywood North and Nolly, a lot. Nollywood. Have you heard of Nollywood? What's Nollywood? Nollywood are films that come out of Nigeria. I've yeah, so never yeah, heard of this. Nollywood. Oh yeah, or goodness. Nigeria is referred to as Nollywood. I didn't know yeah. that. I'd like to go to Nollywood. Oh, wouldn't wouldn't you? Wouldn't I? And now, Bollywood. The last nickname I I want to personally give Chicago. Okay. And you'll probably understand. You're why. on Chicago, whereas I'm like, let's talk about things people call cities. Well, because I just figured this would be a Chicago episode, so I'm trying not to deviate. From well, that. I apologize. I've no, gone on a, I'm trying to think of other ones now. Um, Chicago, my kind of town, from the song. Okay, whose song is that? I think Frank Sinatra sings it or was well known to oh, sing. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you never heard that? Maybe. I mean, I know he did New York, New York. So I feel like, was that a call and response? Everyone in Chicago got upset about New York, New York. So. No, I mean, it's a song, Amanda. Like, like I think it was just. I believe you that it's a song. It was a song popular uh, composed by Jimmy Van Heusen with lyrics from Sam Kahn. And it was for Frank Sinatra. Okay. Well, Chicago, Mike, what is your favorite nickname of Chicago? What do you think sums it all up? Uh, I I do like my kind of town. That's why I said it. But I really like, um, what's the shoulders one? Big shoulders? Uh, Land of the broad shoulders? No, I can't remember. But I really, uh, city of big shoulders. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a pretty neat name. Mm-hmm. What about you? Are you more of a mud city? Uh, I know you're not uh, <laughs> Paris of the Prairie. No, I don't like Paris of the Prairie. I think I've made my case pretty clear on that one. I want to call Paris Chicago of the Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do think it is a windy city. I mean, okay. Chicago is windy. Not Toronto's windy too, but... I always heard that windy city referenced the politicians that they could blow either way. In Chicago. Oh, interesting. That's that's. I actually think the second city is a fun nickname sure. too, and I love this idea that when it got rebuilt, they called it the second city. There's something really fun about rising from the ashes and that whole imagery, although it's not, you know, phoenix. a phoenix. It's a cow. Right. In this case, Mrs. O'Leary's cow. How great would it be? To, Everyone, everybody was mad at this cow. Apparently, to have. Wings on a cow that burst from the flame, so it's a phoenix it's cow. It's a beautiful image for people to go to sleep to. Yeah, sure. A phoenix cow. A phoenix cow rising from the acid ash. ash Even ashes. better. So it doesn't rise from ash. It doesn't rise from <laughs> ashes. It rise from, from the mud. From city. acid. From acid. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. I. Uh, I really did enjoy our time there. We got to go to Harry Carey's, which is one of those. Chicago landmarks that we've never been to and uh, it's a restaurant and obviously owned and uh, in tribute to the late, now late Harry Carey um, who was a sports announcer among yeah. other things and a, a personality certainly known well, most doubt, most, in Chicago most definitely um, and yeah we uh, learned a lot about the architecture I think an architecture tour is a great way to see a city um, because every city is a story. The buildings tell the story, right? 100%. And sometimes we look at cities and we think, you know, what's there to see? What's there to do? And oftentimes the answer is right in front of you. You know, why was Art you know, Nouveau interesting? Art Deco, when did that happen? And where did it happen? And why, you know? The brutalist movement, the modernists, what buildings are modernists and where did they put them and why? And um, which architects use which, which, you know, employed which designs and what was of which time and, uh, and who are the people that financed these buildings and what are their stories? So I do think looking at the buildings and the homes, I mean, Chicago is interesting too, because it's such a brick city, sure. right? They made brick, Chicago brick, well known. And Toronto is a very much a sister city in that way to Chicago, because we are also a very brick forward city. And of course, if you have a city that had a a cow that starts a fire, you're not going to want anything made of wood. So I do get that. Yeah, that Phoenix cow can do a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. One of the buildings that really struck me, Amanda, was mm-hmm. the St. Regis 
Chicago, the St. Regis Hotel, mm -hmm. which was built in, uh, it started construction in 2016 and was completed in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was designed by a Chicagoan designer, Jeannie Gang. Mm -hmm. And it is this wavy, yeah, green, fascinating. green, tall glass building. And I'm not one for glass buildings. That's not my aesthetic, shall we say. Okay. I, I like Art Deco buildings, mm -hmm. but this building with what you mentioned earlier in the show, the blow through or the wind through floor or whatever they call yeah. it, um, just, just was just like a, an emerald on the yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Really beautiful building and, and does kind of stand out in a way. So getting to know that history, you know, the tour took us along the river and right out into the mouth of Lake Michigan and there's a Ferris wheel there. There's Navy Pier yes. there. We didn't spend any real time at Navy Pier on this round, but certainly I've gone and it's sort of that quintessential, almost Bob's Burgers kind of boardwalk, sure. right? With the Ferris wheel and the seagulls and cotton candy and a few, you know, amusement park kind of games and that type of thing. Um, and Chicago also is a great city to walk. Most definitely. Yeah, we, a we walked city. a fair bit. The Miracle Mile. Mm -hmm, which is where we were staying. We didn't go to Old Town this time around. No, we didn't. But I did, like I said, I, I had spent a lot of time there um, about 10 years ago when I was putting up a show there. And uh, Old Town, where I stayed in Old Town, since we're focusing on Chicago. Love it. There was a tiny, tiny, tiny little bar called the Twin Anchors Pub. And there's not much to it. You go in, there's a few seats, but it is known particularly because they filmed Batman, The Dark Knight Rises in there. So there's lots of photos and of filming there. And this pub is known for its ribs. And again, it's not a very big pub. And it's also known for all its local beer. So uh, because it was our neighbor, it was right next door. It was your local local. It's quite hangout. literally next door. Yeah, we would go there after every show. One of the great. one of the things I love in Chicago um, is the bean, the <gasps> Chicago bean. Yes, the Chicago bean. If you want to explain that, it was actually called Cloud Gate. Oh, I didn't know that. It's a public sculpture by Indian-born British artist. Anish Kapoor, mm -hmm. and it's in Millennial Park. And what it looks like is a bean, a silver bean that's very reflective. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's made of stainless steel and it's highly polished. So you can see your reflection in it. Mm -hmm. There's no visible seams either. So it, it seems extremely smooth and yeah. it is smooth, right? Yeah. It would be. And it's just a really pretty sculpture. It was inspired by liquid mercury. Okay. And as I said, it reflects uh, and distorts the city. And it's just a really neat thing to see. So the bean, mm -hmm. last time, when I, 10 years ago, I gifted my sister. I went to Tiffany's or Tiffany. It's Tiffany or Tiffany's. And the blue box jewelry store. Yes. And bought her a bean necklace because I was in Chicago and I thought it was a good 40th birthday gift, which is hilarious to think about it now that it was my sister turning 40. We all thought we were so old, as always, as with every birthday. But um, that bean, which is now what I picture when I picture the large Millennial Park version in Chicago, was originally designed by Elsa Peretti. Yeah, that's what I was looking up. Of oh, that's Tiffany. Great. And um, if you've watched, for example, the... Um, the Netflix show, uh, the Ryan... Um, oh, Hal Halston. Halston. Who, who's that guy's name? Ryan... Uh, Ewan McGregor? Y he is playing Ry Halston. Ryan Murphy? Ryan Murphy, yeah, who's known for so many different series. <laughs> I'm just going to mention famous people and see yeah, if they Yeah, Ryan fit. Murphy. Yep. Anyway, he um, did that eight-part sort of miniseries. Uh, Ewan McGregor's phenomenal in it, playing Halston, the designer. And I love the actor who played Elsa Peretti. She oh, she's so fantastic. good. Fantastic. And... And she's not as well documented maybe as Halston, although people in the design world certainly know her and her designs. But she designed the the Halston perfume bottle and went on to have a quite a career with Tiffany's and designed that iconic bean necklace that is widely worn. And, and it, again, just looks like a little silver gold 
uh, a rose gold, if you want, bean. I love Elsa Peretti's design. Mm-hmm. We discovered it because of that that show you were talking about. Mm-hmm. And you had bought me a shoehorn I that had, was designed yeah. by her. And just for the record, Amanda, it is Tiffany and Co. There's no S there. Good. Now I know. Tiffany and Co. So many companies, you don't know if you should put the apostrophe. Do they own the company Nordstrom's? Or is it just Nordstrom? Ross's? Or just Ross? Yeah. Some people are going to be like, what stores are you talking about? They're very, <laughs> very US. Re- regional stores. Mm. Is there a regional store that you love in Chicago? Oh, um, I'm trying to think. While you're thinking, the reason I mentioned the bean as well is I was looking for a ornament for Christmas from Chicago to put on our tree. Mm-hmm. And we didn't, we weren't, we weren't in a place that was selling Christmas ornaments in April. Mm-hmm. But I found a bean replica with a string on it. It's just a, just a little. Oh yeah, I forgot you And got that's that. going to be our ornament. I love it. For Christmas. I forgot that you got that. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. And there you go. Yeah. I don't remember what I was supposed to be thinking about. A uh, regional store. You know what? Don't worry about you it. You know what? Chicago has all of the, the great American chain, Macy's and sure. Filene's, et cetera. Yeah. Filene's. I think that went under. Went, Did it go under? I think it went under. You know what it has? What? Sears. It, but not anymore. No, it would also went under. But the Sears Tower, I didn't realize the Sears Tower was called such because it was actually owned by Sears. Yeah. I didn't, the company. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's no longer... Um, Sears is obviously no longer part of that tower, but they, everyone still refers to it as the Sears Tower. Yeah. Sears has gone the way of Gimbel's. Mm-hmm. If you've watched Miracle on 34th Street, the big competitor of Macy's is Gimbel's, and Gimbel's was a store but isn't any anymore. Well, Amanda, that's our episode of the City of Big Shoulders. Yeah, the windiest of the windy cities, the second city. If you will. Uh, the um, city. Garden city within a garden yeah garden within a city i don't know uh i want to say how much i love chicago and illinois for that matter yeah. so i just want to I, I know i say it every time we talk about a place but and I really next do. time you're in chicago we absolutely recommend uh go to the sienna tavern we didn't actually go this time but it's one of our favorite places the twin anchors pub harry carries and of course the architecture tour which is taken by boat it's a great way to On see the, the city yeah. yeah gorgeous Until next time, we hope you're able to listen and sleep.